Hello and welcome to a brand new edition of the Signal Sportscast. I'm the host, Marco Alvarado, and today we're going to be having some Rockets, Astros, and Texans talk. The Rockets, wheeling and dealing at the trade deadline, who did they get and what did they give up? Also, with the Houston Astros, the Houston Astros making some new hires within their front office. Who did they get? Where did he come from? And what else is going on on the team? And also some Texans talk with a new head coach the draft order that they are going to have, and also new members already formulating and the coaching staff under the new head coach. So without any further ado, sit back, relax, and let's get to it. The Houston Rockets, again, very active at the trade deadline this past Thursday. The Rockets ended up trading Eric Gordon, Bruno Fernando, and Garrison Matthews. So again, Eric Gordon, gone. Bruno Fernando, gone. Garrison Matthews, gone. Eric Gordon was dealt to the Clippers, and Bruno Fernando and Garrison Matthews were dealt to the Atlanta Hawks. Now, within these trades, the Rockets acquired Justin Holliday, Frank Kaminsky, Danny Green, and also some draft picks. Now, the draft picks are is a swap that the Rockets had already owned from the Milwaukee Bucks from an acquisition that happened last season. So with this swap, they're going to swap it with the Clippers, the top six protected pick, and also two second-round picks. So, for example... Say the Rockets pick, which is realistically Milwaukee's, but again, the Rockets acquire it. If the Clippers pick is better than the Milwaukee Bucks pick that the Rockets own, it automatically switches. So say the Clippers pick is at pick number 18 and the Milwaukee Bucks pick is at number 26. Those picks automatically swap so the Rockets get a higher seating in the draft order because of what the trade details were with the Eric Gordon trade. And also, additional two second round picks for this year's draft from the Hawks. Big nose from there. Other than that, there really isn't much to talk about the Rockets. They've been losing. Everyone's saying it's a tankathon. What is there to say about the Rockets? The Rockets are not a fun team to watch at the moment. Unless you really want to watch some college level basketball, you're better off watching the Big 12. SEC, etc., etc. So the Rockets, worst team in the NBA. They're obviously tanking for number one, but that was probably the biggest news is that Eric Gordon, Bruno Fernando, and Garrison Matthews are gone. Especially Eric Gordon because he's been here for seven years. He was the last long tenured Rocket after the Chris Paul, James Harden era, and he is now gone. He went back to the team that drafted him. He's on a contender and he's looking to win. And honestly, he deserves that. On to the Houston Astros. The Houston Astros a couple weeks ago hired a new general manager in the front office. That's right. James Click is officially no longer with the Astros. They couldn't come to an agreement with them. So the Astros organization went ahead and hired Dana Brown from the Atlanta Braves. Other executives said within the MLB, the Astros has got 10 times tougher. Dana Brown has tremendous success within the Atlanta Braves organization. Atlanta is known to having one of the best farm systems in the MLB. If you know anything about the Astros and our farm system, it kind of speaks for itself with this World Series. Now imagine Dana Brown alongside this Astros talent and the current farm system we currently have. Man, magic is about to happen and more success is going to happen as well. He's also making it a point to where he's going to let our stars have their extensions, meaning Alex Bregman's contract is up. Jose Altuve's contract is up. He's going to work diligently to get these contracts extended so that way the Astros can keep their people also there's also a new oxy sponsorship patch on the sleeve this upcoming season which is going to replace the 60th anniversary patch because it's no longer the 60th anniversary of the houston astros in their existence a new sponsorship patch for the astros they're one of the few teams that are going to have a sponsorship on their jerseys so be on the lookout for this now if you're wondering any background information the mlb a couple years ago has approved of sponsorships on the jersey so they're going to follow the tracks of like the nba and the mls to allow sponsorships on their team's jerseys and this year they're being implemented so be on the lookout for that also spring training starts february 25th and the first game will be against the new york mets possibly justin verlander's first game as a met going up against the houston astros who knows so we keep in mind on that and that's all we have for the strohs and on to our Houston Texans. The Houston Texans have named D'Amico Ryans the new head coach of football operations for the Texans. New head coach, D'Amico Ryans, former captain of the team many, many moons ago. He was a defensive coordinator for the San Francisco 49ers, and he is now a head coach for the Houston Texans. He was signed to a six-year deal. And if you think about it, a couple years ago, David Culley was signed 
for two, three years. And Lovey Smith was signed for three years. And they were all let go of after one season of being a head coach. The difference between this head coach hiring, the Miko Ryans is hired on for six years. Again, this goes back to my point of the balance of power the Texans had within their organization. Jack Easterby is no longer here, ladies and gentlemen. He's fired. We got Nick Casario and Kyle McNair driving the boat. And this is a strong hire. Big candidate. Former teammates approved. Executives approve. He's here for the long run, folks. And we're going to be expecting a lot of success coming out of this hiring. Now, with this hiring and the following days that came after the hiring, the Texans also hired a new chief of staff, which is Nick Cray. He was with D'Amico Ryans with the 49ers. Nick Cray was the person who held the boombox for the 49ers when they came out of the locker room. So if you've ever seen that on TV, he's the guy who's holding the big boombox. And also, Texans hired a new defensive coordinator, Matt Burke. His former team was with the Dolphins and has a tremendous history along with D'Amico Ryans. So D'Amico Ryans is already making moves within the team. Casario is approving, and the Texans are in it for the long haul for this success. Your Texans also have the draft to look forward to. Here's what our draft is looking like. They have two first-round picks. One is the second overall, and the other one is the 12th overall from Cleveland from the acquisition with Deshaun Watson. In the second round, they pick 33rd. They have two third-round picks. They pick 65th and 73rd overall. 73rd overall pick came from Cleveland. They also have a fourth-round pick, fifth-round pick, and about four sixth-round picks to choose from. So the sixth-round pick came from New Orleans. The sixth-round pick came from the Giants. And the sixth pick came from Minnesota. So the Texans are going to be very busy this upcoming draft. Draft is going to be in the spring. So be on the lookout for that. And other than that, that's just about it. You can find us at The Signal at UHCL The Signal on our social media. We'd like to hear your feedback and get active with us. If you tap in, we will interact back. And also, be on the lookout for this next issue as... We will debut a new podcast called the PWP. More information will be released, so tap in with us on our social media. Other than that, I'm Marco Alvarado, and this has been the Signal Sportscast.